Yes people, what is good? I am BA back once again with another reaction in the Wild series. This is episode 3 of season 5 and it is called Not For Attribution. Last episode, we are still following Bubbles being clean and the guy who is sort of trying to help him stay off it that runs those self-help groups seems to be overbearing somewhat. He's not happy with Bubbles just being clean. He wants him to do more and help others more. Me personally, I think the guy should step off a bit. It's being a bit pushy and Bubbles is the type of guy that could relapse due to pressure. So if I was that guy, I would just lay off Bubbles a bit and let him do his thing while he's trying to fully be clean and rid of his former addiction. It might not end well if he keeps pushing him. We saw Marlo, as expected, trying to cut Prop Joe out of the co-op and get a direct link to the Greek through Sergei. And then Avon Barksdale shows up, letting him know he runs that prison and if Marlo wants to see Sergei, he has to give him some money for his sister. And it was just great to see Avon pop back up again. I'm so pleased that he had the final say as to whether or not Marlo could get in contact with Sergei. Now it did seem like Sergei was going to go talk to the Greek about it, but also I get the feeling that Avon has an ulterior motive or he's plotting something. He was a bit too like West Side Brotherhoody with Marlo and it makes me think that hopefully Avon has something up his sleeve to finally get one back over on Marlo once and for all. I would love to see Avon do that before the end of the fifth season. That would be incredible. McNulty's character arc has just done a 180 this season and while last season he seemed to be productive, not drinking, settling down with VE, within a few episodes he's just fucking thrown all that by the wayside. He's now drinking heavily again and even worse, we saw him do something that I personally feel is just legitimately out of character for him and it was when he falsified evidence at that crime scene. Obviously his motivation is, he wants more resources to be allocated toward them so he's trying to create some fake serial killer scenarios so I'm assuming that more funds get given to that unit so they can use it to catch Marlow. I don't exactly know how his plan fully comes into play yet but all I know is that was not a mcnulty thing to do. Really strange to see and really out of place. Here's hoping he doesn't keep up with this weird shit throughout this season because just when you think you know someone, they go and do something like that. Wow. Regardless, I can't wait to see what happens next in the final season so let's get right into it. This is episode 3, season 5, not for attribution. Let's check it out and see what it's saying to it. What in the fuck is he doing now? Is he looking for more bodies he can connect to this serial killer bullshit? Or was he actually back to doing good, legitimate work there? I couldn't sleep, so get the fuck gone. What time did McNulty leave? <laughs> Got a loving employee that shows up hours and hours early just to tell you you can go home. I hope they still get paid for them extra hours, though. Think again about what the fuck you're doing. Bunk, this can work. I hope Bonk doesn't side with Jimmy on this bullshit. This is just too far. Homeless murders from the last five years. Everything before that is on microfilm, but we got enough right here, Jimmy. Most of it open. He seems like he's losing his mind a little bit. This is just so not like him. You know what they do to police in jail? Pretty police like yourself. They do nothing. Police get sent to a fucking secluded private wing where no one can ever touch them and never truly have to face the prison system which they themselves create. Landsman in his clearance rank can suck a hairy asshole. Marlo ain't worth it, man. Nobody is. Marlo's an asshole. This is so strangely petty. And not to say McNulty hasn't been petty, but not to this extent. I'm gonna tell Landsman. Yeah, you keep on with it, I'm gonna rat you out. Nobody likes a snitch, but I completely respect Bunk for trying to curtail him in, because if police start doing bullshit like this, where does it end? They can prove anyone guilty of anything if they're willing to go to this extreme to get something moving. Yeah, he has serious problems right now. Really, really don't like the way McNulty's character is being written this season. And I had heard before I started watching this season that people don't like it. I've got to assume that what they're doing with the McNulty character is a large part of that. What are you doing? Final is out. I want to see my story. Newsroom team, I can't wait to see how it came out. He needs to check himself into rehab. Fuck trying to solve some homeless killing. 
Was McNulty buying that in order to put it on the wrists of more bodies he finds, or is he legitimately trying to do some good police work again and try and match up what that is around that one photograph's wrist? Okay, he's just falsifying more evidence. What a prick. Also, he needs to be careful because his DNA is the only one on that ribbon. That could end up proving him to be the homeless serial killer. So she is pissed off because her story was buried deep within the paper. She was expecting it to be front page. These must be the politics in a newsroom. I guess you would be pissed off as a reporter if you were told that your thing just made the front page and then it got buried deep within the paper. Drop me at the ME. Jimmy. My office. Now. I do really like that Bunk is just not going along with this shit whatsoever. If I was him, I'd be fucking furious too. They're supposed to be doing good work. What's with the red ribbon? Barlow had a open strangle a few years back. Now, I wonder if that homeless guy really was murdered by some cruel serial killerish person, because it sounds like it, getting your hands tied behind your back and strangled. Fucking Marlow. He's got bodies all over him. Well, maybe they need the make-believe. Yeah, maybe you're the asshole who just lost his fucking mind. He 100% is. And it's not helping his case that he instantly takes out his whiskey when being accused of such things. <laughs> now, isn't that a metaphor? Trapped in a box with Jimmy McNulty. He fuck you? He tried. But mostly he just fucks himself. A very good point. Fucking Burrell's asshole must be so tight, you couldn't pull a pin from it with a John Deere tractor. <laughs> Tommy isn't impressed. I'm thinking you could do a lot worse than give me a run as acting commissioner. I know you couldn't make me permanent. This is never happening, Valchek. Thanks for all your loyalty, but get the fuck out of my office. Let me think on it. Do that, Tommy. He's so oblivious to how other people perceive him. Valchek. It's almost uh, pitiful at this point. What are you going to do about the numbers? The fuck can I do? I cut the department budget to the bone, right? Can't very well complain when the crime rate bumps. Just because of Tommy not accepting this 50 million, Burrell has had so much leeway just to continue in his position. That's another thing that probably would have changed had Tommy have just accepted that 50 million. I really hope he doesn't get this governor position either, just so it was all for nothing. Advertising's down, we got a smaller news hall, we're not managing it well. We messed up. Is this taking place during the death of traditional newspapers which we've seen over the last 10 years? I didn't think it was as early as 2011 or whenever this series season was filmed, 2009 maybe? I drove down to the Port Covington plant this morning to get a copy. You ain't the first to do that. Bunch of back patters over there just can't wait to see their shit printed front and centre. I need to know who my victim is. That's the priority. But finish your breakfast, I got plenty of time. If McNulty keeps fucking around like this as well, sooner or later someone's going to catch him in the act of falsifying evidence who isn't bunk, and he will truly fuck himself. I mean, this is some serious shit. I don't know how many years in jail he could get for doing this, but this is no joke. He looks so devious while he's doing it as well. Shame on you, McNulty. Technology is driving distribution. And the internet is a free source of news and opinions. Ah, okay, so this is based around the internet taking away the classic newspaper, which is an interesting story for this season. It caused every newspaper to turn into TMZ, and now news is nothing like it once was. It's fucking pathetic. You need look no further than all the spin articles published after the Johnny Depp Amber Heard trial, painting her as being in the right even after the court found her guilty. It was absolutely pathetic by the media. I blocked all of them on Twitter that day. And I advise you all do the same. If you see the media printing any bullshit on Twitter or something, just block them. That's what hurts them the most. They're all trying to be TMZ. Just block them. Find ways to do more with less. So I guess I will... Uh... Turn this over to Tom, who will get into the specifics. 
How do you make that cup of coffee? Also, that ribbon you snipped off? It might tie to other cases. The ribbon my own investigator missed at the scene. Well, it happens. See, he's already doing dumb shit like that. The forensic people and the medical people will find some inaccuracies in what he's doing here. Something's gonna go wrong for him if he keeps this up. How come there's cuts in the newsroom when the company's still profitable? There's nobody that feels worse about this than I do. So people are getting filed, moved on, their raises aren't going to get met. It's basically a microcosm of what Tommy's doing to all parts of the city. The newsroom is having to do to its staff. One thing that I'm asking, above all, is that you bring me clean numbers. Yes, Mr. Mayor. You made that clear. They did fuck around with the stats, though, to make them look good. That's some bullshit. If I know Bill Rawls, he'll be calling over here as soon as he gets back to his office telling us he warned Burrell against cooking the books. 100%. That's exactly what Rawls will do. All he cares about is potentially getting this commissioner job. I don't know why. He's literally became some sort of weird ladder climber at all costs. I didn't see him as that in the early seasons. He just wanted to appease people by keeping his stats acceptable. He's turned into something worse than that. Oh, this is the restaurant where the Greeks hang. No way. Are they back here? Need you to get a word to Vondas. You got a new friend. Never hear the name. Just let him know Marlo came past with a gift. Marlo is seriously trying to get his foot in the door here. I hope that guy just takes that money and doesn't give it to anyone. <laughs> I want to see him do up his little uh, restaurant. Someone's killing the homeless men. Medical examiner says so. He seems so proud of what he's done. Bunk must feel so conflicted now as one of his real true friends. He had a red ribbon tied around his wrist. Bunk does not look impressed at all. McNulty keeps saying this shit to him like Bunk's eventually going to wilt and go along with it, but I don't think he is. The money to come back <sighs> ain't enough mattresses, is it now? <laughs> you got any ideas? Fuck Marlowe for still trying to be cordial with Prop Joe while snaking him behind his back to the Greeks. I hope the Greeks tell Prop Joe about this shit. Apparently they can hire one and a half twenty-somethings for what it costs to keep me in print, so... Damn, Roger. That is so fucked up. I'm sure this happened to all the newspapers when way more stuff went digital. Have a seat. Relax, Gus. We need you here. I was going to say, they can't fire Gus. He seems like the most competent guy in the whole room. Cole left a note with it. Found on left wrist of victim. Check against other cases. Hey, hon. He is taking this shit way too far. He's going way above what should be happening here. Someone's going to catch him out. If, if not Bunk just getting fed up of this shit and telling someone. It's also hilarious that he's desperately trying to make that other detective pick his ear up at what he's trying to say. And no one's even paying the slightest bit of attention to him. When we're christening him. Sit up on this family. It's partially Michael's fault. Like, he should have known what he was getting himself into, rolling with those guys. I don't care how young he is, he knows what they were about. What, nigga? <laughs> Six Flags be open again. Go on, go and have some fun with Duke Wan, for fuck's sake. That nigga got a stain for conversation. <laughs> not like Marlo. Definitely not. I like Slim Charles. It was a shame to see him after several ties with Avon, but I do like that he's still looking out for prop Joe now. How you gonna clean my money? We got accounts with some of the banks down there. Donations come in as cash. Cashers' checks come out. So they're doing the donation route for money laundering. In Breaking Bad, it seemed like a much smarter strategy when it was random micro donations coming from multiple places. Just giant donations like that and then receiving checks back seems very suspicious to me. Surprised he can still even look himself in the middle. He probably saw like three of himself, to be fair. I think he was looking at the one on the right. Poor Beatty's at home right now, trusting this piece of shit. I feel so bad for Beatty. She's one of the nicest cops in the whole show and he's just treating her like absolute shit. I'm whoring myself a politician. And you got out just at the right time too. That bad, huh? That's right, I forget Norman's backstory was he came from the newspapers. That 
shows why he's got such a great understanding of how things will be perceived or printed. And also gives him a lot of good contacts for his new job. Who's the lean candidate? Rawls, deputy of operations, might have a job for a few months. But there's a front runner from deep in the department. Cedric Dang. Why is Norman giving Gus this information? Does he want this leaked to the press for some reason? Wouldn't that just strengthen Burrell's position? I always like photos of my story. <laughs> or is he just helping Tommy trying to test the waters for Cedric Daniels finally getting bumped up to commissioner? It's hard to tell what he's doing right now, but I don't think Tommy gave the go-ahead for him to leak that to the newspapers, did he? Fuck's sake, McNaughty. What the fuck is your problem? So fucked up. Gas included, if it even get us there. I'm be fretting on the ride now, this motherfucker tried and true. Holy shit, that is a rundown piece of shit. I don't blame Michael for questioning whether or not it will remain standing for the trip. No suction early in his career, but now that he's got Carcetti's ear, now the brass stay out of his way. What's the man's favorite color? just shows how good of a reporter they're about to fire as well. That guy had all the information they needed. An hour or two I'd have had it surrounded. No doubt. Gus knows that Scott is not as competent as that other guy. It's dirty money. It stinks. It is. It came straight off of street corners. Everything runs through Joe. Everything is clean with Joe. Ain't a problem. I love the fact that the Greeks took that stance with Prop Joe. Fuck you, Marlo, for even trying this shit. That was awesome. Starvos ain't taking none of that shit. Hell of a catch. Can you see your file? McNulty is so proud of himself for doing this shit. This cannot end well. Normally, my fee for this would be 20 on a dollar. 40,000 to make it look nice. You need this back today too. I hope Prop Joe already knows. If I was the Greeks, I would have told Prop Joe straight away Marlowe's trying this shit. Omar Ben gone. Took a lot of bad history with him too. Why in the hell would I want that motherfucker back? True, you don't want to be kicking up a hornet's nest. Also, it's great to see that Method Man survived until season 5. I would have never have guessed it when we first saw him. And then Brother Muzon shot him in the shoulder with a pellet and shit. So what's that fast at? Northern Virginia. How about you? I live in Baltimore. That's so cool. You two have your own place? That's cool though, they're getting out and just having fun. Like they should be at that age. He's killing vagrants, is he? a very professional stance by Landsman there. Who covers us for the Sun Papers nowadays? Twig? Yeah, him or this new girl. I don't know, something. I was wondering how the papers were going to tie in to the characters we already know. I thought it was just going to be through this Burrell and Daniels thing, but seems it's going to be a lot more direct with McNulty and this fake serial killer thing. This quote here. Carcetti may be holding the knife, but Daniels sharpened it for him. He's been critical of Burrell since the election. He's not making up another fucking thing again, is he? He truly is the newsroom McNulty, falsifying evidence. She's not going to slam the mayor's choice publicly, but not for attribution. That's her quote. You got any reason to say that, huh? Oh, wow, so it wasn't made up this time. Or perhaps it still was, and he just bullshitted who actually told him to goss. It's hard to tell, but I feel like Scott is making some shit up to look good. But Vaughn is knowing me, no misunderstanding earlier. Nice. A lot cleaner this time. Well done, Marlo. You know, copycats. So there is a signature. <laughs> what? You're good. Oh my god, this is almost cringy. What kind of name is Alma? I have a boyfriend, detective. Yeah? You bigger than me? Oh my god. Fuck you, McNulty. Seriously, fuck you. Talk about making a guy dislikable over three episodes. Y'all trying to criminate me here. <laughs> hey, Darnell Rollins, is it? From Chappelle Show. The meanest burger in the world could be the meanest burger in the world if you cook it that way. Are you able to earn three salaries working three jobs at the same time, Mr. Price? At least Ronnie's still killing shit in the courthouse. If he give up Omar, though, I want in on that shit. This nigga put a gun in my face, man. 
Don't know about Butchie. Nah, no, they're telling him about Butchie. Fuck this. I do not want to see Chris and Snoop go anywhere near Butchie. And fuck Cheese for getting bought off as well. Everything is crumbling around Prop Joe this season so far. Yo, count right? Yeah, all straight. Ain't the point you know. Chris already heard about this shit. Is that the guy that shot Bodie dead? I think it might be. He's obviously higher up than Michael just now. You got any prior convictions? Yeah, nothing that right. We get you a passport then. Take a trip. I can't believe how Marlowe's snaking Prop Joe right now. If only he knew, I hope the Greeks tell him. So fucked up. I mean, I don't even like Prop Joe that much, but I hate to see him getting snaked by even worse people. One day I was cutting class at Patterson, and there was this man on a downtown bus folding his broadsheet just so. What sucks is this guy is clearly way better than Scott at his job, but for some reason they've decided to keep Scott on and fire this veteran. Don't understand how that works, he must be on a larger salary or something like that. Forgive some sinner and wink your eye at some homely girl. Fuck Henry Macon. <laughs> Not a fan of that quote. I thought it was quite poetic myself. Oh, fuck. So it has made the front page. What will Burrell think of this? And obviously Rawls won't be happy. He's not getting anywhere now. It's a damn lie. So what? You're going to be named commissioner. Ronnie doesn't care about the blatant lie. Was Scott lying about who gave him the quote? Or was the quote itself when given to Scott a lie? I can't remember if that woman told Scott that. Now McNulty's annoyed he's not made front page. The newspapers are pissing everybody off today. Fucking assholes. They better not kill Bucci. Ah, oh, that is fucked up. Well, shit is certainly kicking off this episode for better or worse. You know why they call them homeless, Jimmy? Because they ain't got a pot to piss in. And you know why they ain't got a pot? Because nobody gives a good fuck. That's a horrible stance on homelessness. Makes me dislike Landsman somewhat hearing him say that. The alternative is that he goes public with what he knows. Whatever he has about the old days. We sat on it this long. This old day shit is finally coming back up. What the fuck did Daniels do? I do not want to see this shit. Fuck this. Ah, I don't want to even see this shit. This is horrible. Tortured in a blind man. Fucking hell. Oh, Butchie's such a legend for being this loyal. Fucking hell. <laughs> Fuck this. Fuck Chris and Snoop. Absolute pieces of shit for that. Oh my god. I hope Omar kills all these motherfuckers now. I can't believe this shit. Pieces of shit. <sighs> wow. Oh, I could have done without seeing that scene. Butchie's such a loyal dude right until the end. It's hard for me to even pay attention to the next scene after seeing something as bad as that. I got my money, eh? Je ne parle pas anglais. Should have brought, brought a translator, mate. Explication, s'il vous plaît. What? Um, ça? Oui. <laughs> He's doing his best with the language barrier. If you don't want to listen to your partner, then listen to Lester. He has all the wisdom you need, boy. Joke of it is, no one gives a fuck about a serial killer. Wow, so he's telling Lester about this shit. Lester will be even more offended than Bunk. Sensationalize it. Give the killer some fucked up fantasy. Something bad. Real bad. Holy shit, so Lester is down for this shit as well. Just to get money for the Marlowe case. Who gives a damn if we fake a couple of murders that we're never gonna solve, huh? The dead men don't care. No one cares. I wouldn't have expected this from Lester either. I can't believe Bunk is the only one left with a moral compass in that room. Puppy, we gotta cook one of these one night. Well, you know. A nice little dinner. 
And you ain't cooking none of them swans. Leave them alone, you dicks. I do not want to see the scene of Omar getting worried about Butchie. That's just horrific. Butchie should have left at the same time Omar did. Also, low-key, this looks like it could be the exact same island Marlo was on. Please tell me that happens. Colors got to find out where they got honey nut, yo. They expect us to call this bit of land home. <laughs> Still looking for his honey nut. I thought I'm a butchie. Oh man. Oh, I feel so rough after that. I'm sorry, guys. Okay, and that was episode 3 of season 5 of The Wire, Not For Attribution. And I will be back in just a moment with my thoughts on that. So, Not For Attribution, what did I think of that? Sometimes The Wire has just got a really good track record of bringing down my mood. It can, it can make my mood great, but it can also make my mood shit. This episode made my mood shit. For the majority of the episode, we saw Mc McNulty bullshit, falsify evidence, just for this stupid serial killer angle, and just when I thought it couldn't get any more ridiculous, Lester thinks it's a good idea too, and is now actively working with McNulty to try and further this story. I was hoping for a happy ending for all of the primary cast, but I cannot see this ending well for McNulty whatsoever. If he was smart, he would fucking stop right now and I've got nothing but respect for Bunk for just sticking to his guns and having absolutely nothing to do with it. On top of that, he's breaking the law left and right and drinking all the time. He was having uh, sex on top of that car in public with that woman and only got away from an arrest because he flashed his badge, stealing a newspaper. He's just thrown his moral compass out of the window this season. I have no idea what he is doing, but he's going to get fucked over if he continues down this path. 100%. He is going to fuck himself. And it seems like the newspaper... Again, it's like a microchasm of what Tommy had to do to the city. Due to technological advancements, the newspaper is having to make drastic cuts and filter its staff down to a smaller number. They said they were going to be keeping a good core group, but they kept on that guy, Scott who seems to just bullshit in his articles all the time, instead of that one guy who, who got given his walking papers, who was clearly far more experienced and had way more contacts than him. So it shows that the, the remaining news team aren't just going to be the best of class, it's going to be a mixture of the cheapest people possible in order to continue running it smoothly as they can. We saw Marlowe continue to snake prop Joe and try and get a foot in with the Greeks. First they let him know they wouldn't just accept his bills from the street. And then, Marlowe went back to Prop Joe, who actively helped him and did it for free because of the co-op, just to bring the money back to the Greeks to try and cut Prop Joe out. He's no saint himself, Proposition Joe, but he is definitely the lesser of two evils between him and Marlowe, and I hope that he finds this shit out directly from the Greeks before it's too late. Michael tried to have a day of fun with Duquan and got severely punished for it when he went back to the corner. I don't know why, it seemed to run smoothly in his absence, but yeah, the, the higher-ups in Marlowe's crew were not happy with him taking a day off, and it just shows that even when he tries to detach and have a bit of fun which is completely acceptable for someone his age, just go out to a fair and have a bit of fun, he was severely punished for it and it brought him back to reality, there is no escape from the new life he has chosen. An absolutely fuck method man for accepting a small amount of money off Chris and Snoop and then telling them about Bucci, which led Chris and Snoop to go to Bucci's place torture and kill him. One of the roughest scenes I've had to see in the entire Wild series. I didn't need to see that shit and poor Omar is just getting his acquaintances tortured throughout this show. At least we didn't have to see what happened to Brandon but Bucci who is even more innocent, he, like Brandon was alongside Omar when they were robbing people. Bucci's just a guy looking out for Omar, running his bar, and they poured liquor in his eyes and shot him twice, and oh, it was fucking horrible to see. It was even more heartbreaking due to the loyalty to the death shown by Bucci. Nothing moves men more than loyalty to the death. It is always so admirable and honourable to see all these old fashioned words that people think are from a bygone era when they should still actually be living by that shit and it was great to see Bucci have his boys back to the moment of death no fucking around to the death and as I said you could only hope to have a single friend in your life who would extend you that courtesy 
And I've got nothing but respect for Bucci for doing that. And I will always hate Chris and Snoop and Marlowe now because they did that. I love Bucci's character. He was a very upbeat, pleasant dude. He always looked out for Omar and tried to give him the best advice to get out of there. And just when Omar has finally gotten out of there, against Prop Joe's advice as well, they, they just couldn't let it lie and went after him again. And Omar, who was basically in retirement, has just got word this has happened to Bucci, and I'm assuming he's going to come back looking for absolute blood now. Why do I get the feeling that this might end with Omar being drawn back out and killed by one of them? That would be horrible to see. Best case scenario, he comes back, kills Chris, kills Snoop and kills Marlowe, but that seems like a lot to ask of one man. Regardless, that whole last 10 minutes of this episode just put me on such an incredible downer, so I do apologise if I'm not as animated as usual guys, but I feel like I've had the wind punched out of me with them two scenes, Butchie getting tortured and then Omar finding out about it. Almost as bad as when D'Angelo was strangled. Fucking horrible. And I just pray that Omar comes back and seriously does some damage he should contact brother Muzone in New York as well and say like yo you fancy one last hoorah bro (laughs) cause yeah this is the final season people are gonna die I just hope it's no more of the people I like I'm still hoping for redemption for all these people I've been rooting for for 5 seasons now that's a lot of investment and it's gonna end tragically for some I feel but here's hoping that at least Omar writes that wrong because that is a horrible atrocity that has been committed on Bucci. They didn't just kill him, they made sure he suffered before killing him. Horrific to see. Torture scenes are always horrific to watch, incredibly graphic. I mean, torture scenes are that impactful that when you watch Game of Thrones, it changed a man from being absolutely hated by everyone in the fan base of Game of Thrones to pitied by the end of the torture he endured. I don't want to spoil it for people that haven't seen the show, but we literally saw a character shift in how an evil man was perceived just due to the torture he was put through. And when you see a guy like Bucci, who's such a nice guy, he's only ever looked out for Omar and tried to offer advice, get tortured like that, ah, it was just the most fucked up thing ever. And I can't wait to see Chris, Snoop and Marlo bite the bullet for this. And if they don't, oh, I'm going to be angry at the wire. I am going to be fucking angry at the wire if they don't write this wrong now. Wow. Also, it looked like the same island that Marlo had went to and Omar was retired and maybe it was just a coincidence because of the nice weather and different languages but it genuinely looked like the same island if they were to bump into one another in the same remote place away from all the other shit that would be some mad shit to see I'm probably wrong on that but wow we can only hope that Omar spots Marlowe without any of his security around like that if you've liked this video click like subscribe to the channel to see more videos like this ring the bell to be notified as to when they drop if there's anything you want to discuss comment down below and share this around to anybody you think might want to watch this series along with us my Patreon link is down in the description if you become a patron you get access to my blog you get access to these reactions I put on YouTube a month and a half in advance and you also get full length versions of everything I react to on YouTube. So consider becoming a patron, it helps me and the channel out so much and until next time, I have been BA, peace.